Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Today is episode four of A Woman's Guide to Alzheimer's Disease. Imagine this. You're 42, thriving professionally, managing family dynamics, and handling the relentless demands of daily life. Exhaustion feels normal, almost unexpected. But here's the harsh truth. Sleep deprivation isn't just robbing you of your energy. It's actively damaging your brain. And research shows that women who routinely sleep fewer than six hours a night have a staggering 36% higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So guys, today, let's explore why reclaiming your sleep might be one of the most important decisions you make for your cognitive future. Let's start by understanding why sleep is so essential for Alzheimer's prevention. Because sleep isn't just downtime, it's your brain's maintenance. During deep restorative sleep, your brain undergoes a powerful detoxification process through a specialized network known as the glymphatic system. Think of the glymphatic system as your brain's internal cleaning crew. It meticulously flushes out harmful metabolic waste products, including amyloid beta proteins. And these proteins are sticky. They're sticky substances that accumulate outside of the neuron, and they are a hallmark of this disease. When we cycle through sleep, right, we go through specific stages. When you start to fall asleep, stage one, that's generally light sleep. Stage two is light sleep as well, right? We're just falling asleep. And then around 90 minutes after that, depending on how tired you are, you move into stage three. That is deep sleep sleep. That is where for some people, even if an earthquake happened or an explosion, they can't hear it, right? But this is really hard to wake up from. That's the stage I'm talking about. During that stage, that's when your brain goes through the cleaning process. It's like a washing machine, cerebral spinal fluid in your brain washes out all of the toxins and all of the debris that occur during the day and taking out with it amyloid beta. So this is why you need a bank on sleep. There has been groundbreaking research published in Nature Neuroscience that reveals that disrupted or insufficient sleep directly impairs the glymphatic system's function. When this system falters, amyloid beta isn't adequately cleared from the brain. This was in episode two. I know I mentioned that amyloid beta isn't the culprit when it comes to Alzheimer's disease. The accumulation of amyloid plaques is the demon. When you don't clear the brain of amyloid beta, they do form these plaques. And these plaques are the things that interfere with neuronal communication. It triggers inflammation and eventually contributes to cognitive decline, which is a pre-dementia state. Many studies in neurology and JAMA neurology further underscores the strong correlation between sleep disruption and cognitive impairment. It actually, these studies demonstrate that even subtle shifts in sleep patterns, such as reduced duration, poor quality, or even fragmented sleep can significantly elevate your Alzheimer's risk. Specifically for for women who statistically experience more sleep disturbances and have a higher lifetime risk for Alzheimer's disease than men, prioritizing sleep becomes not just beneficial, but critical. So why should this matter to you right now? It's because every night of insufficient sleep adds up. Your brain relies on consistent, high quality sleep to clear toxins, to consolidate memories, and to repair cellular damage. Ignoring sleep isn't merely sacrificing energy, it's sacrificing cognitive resilience and longevity. The evidence is clear. Prioritizing your sleep isn't indulgent. And I want every woman to know this. It's your strongest strategy for preserving cognitive health and dramatically reducing your Alzheimer's risk. So do everything you can to improve quality and quantity of your sleep. So let's talk about some of the hidden impact of hormones on sleep and brain. Just get really honest. If you're between 35 and 55, your hormones aren't just fluctuating. They're on a roller coaster. You're juggling family, career, life. And now suddenly sleep feels impossible. You're waking up multiple times a night. You're fighting to drift off. You're drenched from night sweats and you're wondering what the heck is happening to me? I'm here to tell you, it's not your imagination, it's your hormones. During perimenopause and menopause, your two critical hormones that we discussed in episode three, estrogen and progesterone, take a nosedive. 
And these hormones aren't just about reproduction. They actually are powerful regulators for your sleep architecture. Estrogen specifically enhances REM sleep. Remember I mentioned you've got stage three sleep, that's deep sleep. Once we move out of stage three, we go into stage four sleep, which is REM. It stands for rapid eye movement sleep. That's because in a PSG, which is a polysomnography, which is a sleep study, when you're wearing the EEG, what we see is your eyes are making these horizontal eye movements really rapidly, and that's characterized as REM sleep. So during this stage, your brain actually looks like an awake human. You know, when you look at this, the brain of somebody who is awake and the brain of somebody who's in REM sleep, it kind of looks like the same, like the brain waves are doing the same, but you're completely paralyzed from the neck down. And estrogen specifically enhances REM sleep, as I mentioned, but it also boosts serotonin production. This directly supports the brain's memory consolidation process. When estrogen declines, sleep becomes fragmented and REM sleep, which is actually very vital when your brain locks in new information and actually is referred to as emotional first aid, this significantly suffers. We've got amazing peer-reviewed research published in Frontiers in Neuroscience, which shows precisely how declining estrogen levels disrupt sleep patterns. And this disruption doesn't just leave you feeling groggy the next morning. It seriously impacts your brain's long-term health. This is why I'm so big on HRT, because estrogen protects neurons by enhancing blood flow, regulating inflammatory pathways, and stimulating nerve growth factors, which are critical for cognitive function. So when estrogen levels plummet and sleep is compromised, your brain's nightly repair and restorative processes slow down dramatically. And this is what is really sad. That's what increases our risk of getting this disease and other neurodegenerative diseases as well, not just Alzheimer's disease. But it's not just estrogen. Progesterone plays a really major role in sleep. Progesterone helps with calming your body. It's a sleep promoting hormone. And this declines sharply during this phase of life. And this drop exasperates anxiety, contributes to nighttime awakenings, and it intensifies insomnia symptoms. Imagine progesterone as the brakes on your stress response. Without it, your brain is racing at night, sabotaging restorative sleep and setting the stage for cognitive impairment. I know it sounds daunting, but here's the empowering part. Recognition is your power. Understanding this hormonal interplay means that you have agency to act. Prioritizing sleep hygiene, exploring hormonal balancing therapies with your healthcare provider, and incorporating targeted lifestyle adjustments like stress management, strategic supplementation, and temperature regulation can drastically improve the quality of your sleep and ultimately the quality of your brain. I know, Louisa, that's all well and good, but how can we optimize our sleep? Let me tell you how I optimize my sleep and you know how I live my life. It pretty much comes down to science. So the first one I have to point out is maintain a consistent sleep schedule. Establishing a regular sleep wake time is so crucial. If I would argue that sleep consistency is probably even more important than the amount of sleep that you're getting. Going to bed and waking up at the same time each day, even on weekends, helps regulate your circadian rhythm. Disruptions to this rhythm can impair sleep quality and cognitive function. Please, I know you mothers, I know you guys want to attack me right now because you're thinking, but I have a, a screaming baby. I get that but I'm just giving you the science and then hopefully this empowers you along the lines, along your life as well after the transition of you giving birth and hopefully going through your life. We've seen that like study after study has shown that irregular sleep patterns are associated with increased risk of cognitive decline in menopausal women. Trying your hardest, and I try and say stick to a routine 80% of the week. If you can stick to a regular sleep and wake time, like 80 or 90% during the week, then that's all you can ask for. And that is absolutely brilliant. The next thing you can do to optimize your sleep is actually optimizing the environment that you sleep in. Your bedroom should be a sanctuary for sleep. And you should aim for a cool temperature around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 18 degrees Celsius, because cooler environments facilitate the body's natural drop in core temperature, which is necessary for sleep onset. So in order for us to fall asleep and stay asleep, we need to be sleeping in a cool environment. And I do this by sleeping on a temperature controlled mattress. I sleep on the eight sleep pod pro cover. 
it matches to my biometric reading. So basically what I've done is I cool my mattress down as I'm falling asleep and then I have it set. So my alarm, my wake up time is 6 a.m. So the bed actually starts heating up at around, I think it's around 5.30 a.m. It starts heating up. So it's at its peak at around six and that's what wakes me up. And guess what? Sleeping on this mattress has actually helped with the quality of my sleep because you can see this, it matches with an app that they have and it gives you every day a breakdown of your sleep architecture. So I've seen this, I've experimented with this for the past three years. But if you don't have that, then just ensure that the room is dark and quiet. Consider blackout curtains and white noise machines if needed. I think blackout curtains are incredible. I sleep with an eye mask, like religiously, because I don't like any light getting in my eyes. But these types of conditions, guys, support the body's production of melatonin, which is the sleep hormone regulator. Melatonin levels as well naturally decline during perimenopause and during menopause. So optimizing your environment can compensate for this decrease. I think I have to point out as well magnesium because that's probably been one of the biggest things in my sleep fitness journey. Whether you are incorporating magnesium rich foods into your diet or whether you're just supplementing, either way it plays a massive role role. And this is because magnesium plays a role in supporting deep restorative sleep by maintaining healthy levels of GABA, gamma amino proteric acid. It's a neurotransmitter that promotes relaxation. So foods rich in magnesium include leafy greens, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. And some studies actually suggest that magnesium supplementation can improve sleep quality, particularly in individuals with low magnesium levels. I read a statistic that around 50% of the US population is actually magnesium deficient. Magnesium is found at the center of a chlorophyll molecule. Chlorophyll is what gives plants their green color, which is why magnesium rich foods are green leafy vegetables. But I've actually been supplementing every day. Magnesium is also a precursor to vitamin D. So you can naturally raise your levels of vitamin D by just supplementing with magnesium alone. I supplement with magnesium citrate every day, but I'm also having magnesium L3 and 8 before I go to bed. If you are going to take any of these, I would suggest, especially if you're even going to supplement with melatonin, if you are, make sure you consult with your healthcare provider. However, melatonin supplements can be beneficial, especially as I mentioned earlier, natural melatonin levels decline during menopause. Short-term use of melatonin has been shown to aid in sleep onset and improve sleep quality. I usually supplement with around two grams of melatonin per night. I find if I have anything more than that, like I've supplemented with five grams, if I have more than that, then it makes me wake up. I guess it's because I get this huge surge in melatonin and then it runs out and then you wake up and I hate that. So my sweet spot is really having around two grams per night. And it's also dependent on where you are in the world. I travel a lot nationally and internationally. So I usually set my circadian rhythm with melatonin. Last but not least, leverage sleep technology. I think that like cooling mattresses is great. I think that there's really nice innovative eyewear that you can use. We now have seen the impact of white noise on sleep performance. So if you have anything in terms of technology to enhance your sleep quality, your sleep quantity, I wouldn't shy away from that. Wearable devices like sleep trackers can track sleep patterns, providing insights to adjust habits accordingly. I think that that's a really, a really good thing to point out too. Just don't become overly obsessed with it. When you're looking at sleep trackers, you really want to know that it is something that can help you look trends. It's not the be all and end all. I don't believe that sleep trackers are 100% accurate. I think that sleep trackers Trackers like the Whoop or the Aura Ring are probably around 50 to 60% accurate. I think where the beauty is in these trackers is they can really dictate the amount of sleep you're getting, but they probably can't dictate whether you're getting two or three or four hours of deep sleep or REM sleep. So be cautious with that. I also want to point out something really, um, really fascinating, which is if you're having really detrimental sleep and you've tried everything, you may want to discuss with your healthcare provider cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia because CBT 
I is a structured evidence-based approach to treating chronic sleep problems. I've had so many people go through this. I've seen so many patients who have gone through this, who I refer out to go and get CBTI, and it's helped them immensely. Cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia focuses on identifying and changing thoughts and behaviors that interfere with sleep. And research actually indicates that CBTI is effective in improving sleep quality and particularly beneficial for menopausal women experiencing insomnia. So ladies, your sleep is a non-negotiable pillar of brain health. You have the power to make it simple yet profound changes in your everyday life. You can do this by starting tonight. Remember that every single night matters. Think about sleep as compound interest and think about sleep deprivation as basically taking away money from your bank. I'd love to hear from you. Share your sleep journey successes and challenges on social media or through reviews. Together, let's champion this vital aspect of our health. Until next time, prioritize your sleep because your future self is counting on it.